Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Taylor and welcome, welcome to today's video. We are going over my morning routine and the beautiful thing about a morning routine is it's not always the same based on the season of life, your responsibilities, whatever that is. I just wanna share mine with you. Maybe you'll get some tips, some nuggets, maybe some things that are helpful for you. Um, I feel really good about my morning routine right now. If you have any questions, just put them below. If you have any tips for your own personal journey and establishing a morning routine, I would love to see those below. I would love to hear from you. I, I want to give you three things, like my three key takeaways as I've been studying morning routines and the impact and, and just what they can do for your day. Number one is your morning routine starts with sleep. I love flipping the day so that it starts with 8 p.m. bedtime. Instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to wake up at five and my day's going to start, my day starts with rest. And then that way, just look at the value and the what you're able to do in the day when you get a good night's sleep. Now, sometimes kids wake up, sometimes there's things that are completely out of your control, and I get that, I totally know that. But a lot of times we're pushing the bedtime to later, I coach women on this quite a bit, is that's my time, that's the time where I get to myself. And I ask them, like, are you feeling good about how you're spending that time? Is it how you want to take care of yourself? What is the way that you want to take care of yourself and that allows you to step into alignment with who you want to be. They're like, no, staying up late and, <laughs> and being groggy the next day and resentful and all that stuff is not how I want to spend my time. And I'm not saying that's always how it is. Maybe you're working on a project and staying up late. Maybe that's when you have your best energy and your best thoughts. It, you really get to create your, the routine that works best for you. But with your day starting at night, starting at 8 p.m., and then I can look at my day as I start with sleep and then the morning begins. I just love that tip. The second thing with morning routines, I love this little strategy. I learned it from Mel Robbins where she just counts down. If there's anything in your day and you've intentionally planned, okay, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m., whether it's a workout in the morning, whatever your morning routine looks like that you're going to be doing in the morning. A lot of times I like to do two hours of things before my kids wake up. And so I'll wake up at five and then get those things done. My kids wake up seven, seven thirty. A lot of times I don't want to in the moment. So Expect yourself to resist it and to have distractions and things that would in the moment be more comfortable. And so maybe ask yourself, am I living a life where I'm staying in comfort, like short-term comfort versus long-term success? Because if my long-term success includes me spending two hours of time working on me, whether that's spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, whatever that is, where you get to fill your cup, if I'm putting that off because I want to sleep and then stay up late and that habit, I feel groggy and not my best self, then ask yourself, am I focusing on short-term comfort versus long-term success? And I often like to think, what will my future self like I'm doing this now for my future self. What will my future self thank me for? Because just expect distractions and discomfort and resistance. You're going to resist it. So Mel Robbins teaches this countdown method. You're just going to say three, two, one, and then do the thing. So if the alarm goes off, I just count down three, two, one. I same thing with going in cold water. I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I just count down and then I do it. Anticipating it, like standing up to speak, public speak, three, two, one, do it. The hardest part is deciding to start. The hardest part is taking action. And then you notice, oh, it's not too bad. Same thing, starting a workout, three, two, one, start. And then once you get in the, in the rhythm, you're like, ah, endorphins are going. I feel really great. So use this strategy when you meet resistance with something that you, you planned ahead to do because it was in alignment with the person you want to be and how you want to show up that day. So this third and final tip, I learned this from Craig Ballantyne. He teaches the um, perfect morning routine. And it before you go to bed, you decide what's the one thing I'm going to get done tomorrow. If you've read the book, The One Thing by um, Gary Keller, I love how he simplifies it. Focus on one thing. We're like, well, I got to get this done, this done, this done, this done. It, it's almost more difficult. We make it more difficult to pick one thing. So just pick one. And then it's like, ah, if I get to the other things, I get to the other things. But what's the one thing I'm going to accomplish tomorrow? And 
in that morning time before life happens, kids need me and um, just whatever happens in the day, my energy is expended elsewhere. What can I do? What's the one thing that I'm passionate about that I really want to do? If you're an author, you're spending that time writing. If you are a business owner, maybe you're spending that time creating content, whatever that is, maybe writing emails. Maybe it is that you're working on developing a new hobby or a new um, skill set. And so you take one hour in the morning or whatever amount of time it is, decide the night before what that one thing is. And then in the morning, you want to follow through. So honor your calendar, honor what you've planned ahead to do and follow through. And that's where you are going to build momentum because you're building confidence by just taking action. So action builds confidence and momentum. I need to take action because I can be very wishful. I plan this all out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I don't do it. And then I feel like I'm a failure. I can't ever do anything I say I'm going to do. But what if I just decide count down three, two, one, I'm going to do the thing. The one thing, once I get going, and then you're going to build that momentum. You're going to build that confidence. It's going to be a lot less resistance. You're going to have to do a lot less thinking around it. And it's going to start to create a, a new habit that's in alignment with who you want to be. Okay. Let's go into my morning routine. Good morning, rise and shine. I do my hair and makeup and I put on a professional shirt over my workout clothes. No joke. I take about 20 minutes to get ready. It's glorious. Sometimes 30 if I want to get really ready. <laughs> and then we are out into the great room. I'm opening up the blinds. Now this was filmed at 6 a.m. Normally it's dark outside, but look at me take a breath of fresh air. All right, now that we got the sunshine in there, I grab a glass of water. It took me a year to establish this habit. Love it. Then I say a prayer. It's the moment in the morning when it is quiet, it is peaceful. I'm doing this, remember, from 5 to 6 a.m., so this hour block in the morning. And then I journal. I love the journal called Switch. I also have a journaling technique that I've learned from becoming a life coach and from my own coach and mentor. I jump into meditation. This I also learned from a mentor. I'm doing a self-guided meditation. Love it. Now we are jumping into coaching from 6 to 8 a.m., two hours I coach. And I, I see my perfect day as having coaching in it. I coach women. I help them with their mindset. I help them with their time management. I help them with taking action in their business. And I love it. I absolutely love coaching. Not only does it fill my cup, but helps women out. Now, the best part of my day is right here. My kids wake up. I get to look them in the eye. I get to hug them and hold them, and I get to be fully there because I've taken that time in the morning to fill my cup, to do the work that I love and lights me up, and now I'm all in on my kids. All right, make sure that you check out next week's video where I teach you about the power hour, how I plan out my week. It's very simple. It is a strategy that I love because when you plan your, to run your day, you just have more freedom. You truly do because I'm not allowing the day to, to choose and dictate what I do. I already have intentionally planned how I'm going to spend my time and energy. And I absolutely love that. It opens up so much more space, freedom, peace, calm, all the good things. So join me for next week's video. Bye.